I was going to give you a bunch of statistics and everything, but uh, that was read in the citation. So I think I would just like to um, uh, mention the obvious. As the congressman said, I have done nothing uh, here to contribute to these awards other than to uh, hire good people, surround myself with capable people that are smarter than me, and give them 100% support, and this is what happens. And I got to tell you that, uh, no kidding, uh, wherever I go in the United States, or the world for that matter, uh, when I bump into people and the, you, they see the Happy Hooligan patch, they know us. And that beca that's because of the efforts of all you guys that, uh, that uh, earn us these achievements. Uh, so they are uh, not a small thing. It is a historic achievement, and it's all upon the foundation of the work that you guys do. So that is uh, so, um, uh, I feel such pride to go around and represent the Happy Hooligans out there, and, and you just need to know that, that, uh, that those comments uh, truly happen. And it is wonderful to, uh, uh, to be received uh, as the commander of an outstanding organization like this. Uh, now, the congressman mentioned that uh, perhaps next year we'll get another one. Uh, our closeout period was just a couple days ago. And I thought uh, what I would do is just give you a summary of the stuff we've done this last year uh, that will hopefully lead to another one of these uh, awards. But again, we've, we've continued to fly nearly 39,000 hours in the Predator this, this last year, uh, which I can say uh, mishap-free. Um, we supported the flood this year. Uh, to, to point this out, uh, what happened in the flood this year, you know our, our North Dakota National Guard Army and Air responded magnificent, magnificently to the Red River Valley, uh, actually statewide flooding. As our Air Guard here, 100% of us was involved in the flood one way or the other. Either you were deployed overseas in the GWAT, you're deployed or on active duty working on the Predator, you were in training, deployed to school, uh, or you were uh, fighting your own home battle, or you were activated in the state active duty. When you added up all those numbers, it was 100% of our Air National Guard was contributing in one way or the other to the state or national uh, uh, fight there for a period of a week or so. I have asked around my other commanders, and I don't think there's another unit out there in the nation that at any time has had 100% um, um, activation of their unit one way or the other. So that's just something you need to know. It's, it's a spectacular achievement. Um, a lot of deployments. Uh, we've supported the AEF and the support group in every uh, country you can imagine around the world. Our security forces just got uh, back uh, six weeks ago or so from Iraq and are doing their in a reunion and retrogation event this weekend. Our airlift squadron just deployed to uh, the CENTCOM AOR with the C-21 with uh, our first ever blue suit maintenance uh, support group went with them. Um, a uh, ESO camp inspection. Uh, we had a superb ESO camp inspection, and again, all of this despite the dramatic conversion we've had. We had a stand of Al inspection in ops. It's been 10 years since we've had, had one before, but yet we excelled in that. Um, our 219th up, uh, up in Minot, we established the first ever Air National Guard PRP program, when in all reality, we had a, a Lieutenant Colonel Air National Guard officer, Tad Schauer, who was successfully wrote PRP policy for the United States Air Force. It's an incredible achievement. All of these things will uh, create a, a great um, submission for next year's uh, award, and hopefully we'll get that.